wrong. It's about good versus evil. And that is why Ukraine must win. <laughs> good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my new video. So Boris Johnson has opened his mouth again. So as you know, Boris Johnson is fighting for his political life in the UK and he could get kicked out any minute now. So even if he gets kicked out, there's a job probably waiting for him in the Ukrainian parliament um, alongside Zelensky or even take over Zelensky's job. He seems to be doing a good job there. But people in Ukraine love him. They're giving him standing ovations. And he seems like he's the leader of Ukraine. He's forgetting, he's completely forgotten about all of his duties in England and he's completely f focused or obsessed with Ukraine at the moment. So recently he, he um, obviously had this uh, ridiculous speech and he said that Ukraine will be free. Uh, he also said that this is a fight about good versus evil. He also said that Ukraine will win and w must win. And all of these ridiculous uh, statements, to be honest. And you can see here, Ukraine will win, Ukraine will be free. Oh, really? How, how are they going to win exactly? Can you tell us how are they going to win? <laughs> because <laughs> I can't believe he still thinks, you know, that Ukraine is winning and Ukraine will win. Despite Russia destroying Ukraine at the moment, absolutely destroying. You just got to look at the map. You got to look at Mariupol. You got to look at the rest of what's happening around Ukraine. You know, he's still following this Western narrative about Ukraine is winning, and this is really, really dangerous because, you know, Ukraine is not winning, and they are losing lives. They're losing people. They're using young lives. These Ukrainian lives are the future of Ukraine and he's sacrificing all of them. The whole of the West narrative about Ukraine is winning. This is stopping from Ukraine, you know, coming with a deal with uh, Putin or Russia. You know, they could, if Ukraine knew they were losing, they could easily sit down with Russia, work out a deal. And rather than lose more needless lives, this is a one way battle. Russia is literally destroying Ukraine as we speak and you know Boris is just there playing lives with the Ukrainians and he's just using this war proxy war till every single last drop of Ukrainian blood same as Biden has been doing and they're just following all the same narrative and it's actually it's absolutely quite disgusting to be honest really, really disgusting so let's see what else he says he says um you have proved the old saying, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but it's the size of the fight in the dog. So, I don't know what that means. <laughs> absolutely doesn't know what he's talking about. He's probably on cocaine or something, because this is absolutely ridiculous. Russian soldiers no longer have the excuse of not knowing what they're doing, the Prime Minister added, flanked by both British and Ukrainian flags. So you got um, obviously here people uh, giving him a standing ovation. You got a guard here in the parliament with a weapon. I don't know why he's in there with a weapon. Then he comes to his most famous part of his speech. It's about freedom versus oppression, right versus wrong, and good versus evil. <laughs> I mean, who writes these speeches? I mean, this is from uh, some sort of Hollywood uh, movie or something. What kind of speech is that i mean is that really necessary right versus wrong good versus evil so who's good who's evil are the azov militants good are the neo-nazis any good what about um ukrainian killing people in the donbass for all of these years is that any good what's right what's wrong i mean seriously what kind of um speech is this what it gets worse, guys. It gets much worse. He's talking about a free media, the rule of law, free elections, robust parliaments such as your own. He's, just, he's talking about a free media. Ukraine does not have a free media. They have jailed every single pro-Russian um, pro media outlet out there or they've been killed. The rule of law, there is no rule of law in Ukraine. Free elections, there is no free elections. The current government was put in place after a coup and robust parliaments such as your own. Uh, so these parliament guys are basically 
killing off every single Ukrainian, thinking they are winning, and they are letting Zelensky ruin the country and ruin their lives. So if you call that a robust parliament, then, you know, you got another thing coming. He also says that Vladimir Putin has done an advertisement for democracy. Carcasses of Russian armor littering your fields and streets are monuments to his folly. I don't know what war <coughs> program he's looking at, but I think it's the other way around. If you go to Telegram and stuff, there's bodies of Ukrainian armor, Ukrainian bodies all over the streets, not the other way around. I mean, I don't know what war he's looking at. He must be either on something or he's been too busy looking at porn rather than focus on what's actually happening on the war. I'm going to leave with the best till last. And he says the conflict is Ukrainians finest hour, the prime minister told the gathering. So how is this conflict Ukraine's finest hour when you have hundreds of Ukrainians who are either dead or injured and you have you know millions of refugees and literally the whole country is destroyed their infrastructure is destroyed the gdp is destroyed they've lost land to russia how could this be ukraine's finest hour somebody please explain that to me this is worse than baghdad bob i, I swear every time this guy opens his mouth you just want to laugh it's you know it's not funny but he thinks he's benny hill rather than churchill He's also not doing very well locally as well. He had an interview recently with um, GM, uh, Good Morning Television. And during this interview, this old woman was on the phone and she was talking about how, basically, she was talking about how she's forced to cut down to one meal a day. She's resorted to traveling on buses to stay out of her home and keep the bills down. So this woman basically um, can't afford to eat, can't afford to keep her house warm. So she's out of her home and she basically stays on the buses all day just to keep warm. And do you know what Johnson's um, reply was? Johnson's reply was he was bragging that he introduced free bus passes for pensioners during his reply. And you can see here the 24 hour freedom pass was actually something that I actually introduced. Can you see the arrogance of this man? Rather than actually answering the question about these high living costs and stuff, I just cannot believe how out of touch he is from reality. Seriously, he's, he's basically bragging that this woman who um, can't afford to her heating bills, can't afford to eat, she's on a bus all day, and he's like standing up saying, oh, yeah, yeah, the bus thing. Oh, that's my, uh, um, I introduced that old age pensioners bus pass. What about the rest of the population? Are you asking everybody else to go and sit on the bus? What about all these uh, young people? Are, they, are you asking the whole population in UK to go and sit on the bus? And this 24 hour freedom bus pass, I, I don't think that's for UK. I think that's just for London when he was a London mayor. I mean, I'll have to double check that, but I don't even think that um, statement is correct or true. This guy, I mean, I can't believe we have such an idiotic prime minister. I just can't believe it. With all of the problems happening around the world and he is just so idiotic with his responses. So where, what happened to his uh, speechwriter when he came to this show then? Obviously this speechwriter was missing. He hired a good speechwriter for the Ukrainian parliament, but what about for this show? I really, really can't believe this. I can't believe people are not protesting out in the street to get this guy out. I can't believe these papers, newspapers are still supporting him. And the British public are still supporting him. There's local elections at the moment, so we will find out how popular he is. You know, I just don't think he's got long to last. But even if he goes, who do we have? Rishi Sunak, no way, no way people will want him. Probably going to be Liz Truss, to be honest. I bet you any money is going to be Liz Truss. Do you know why? Because she's saying all of the right words to please her American masters and the Americans will do everything they can to put her in power. Because that's what Americans do. If they like someone, they'll put you in power. And I bet you Liz Truss will going to be our next PM. And God help us if that, if that happens. 
Then you have a tweet from this lady who is an Ukrainian MP and you can see um, she posted something about Boris and she says Boris Johnson is addressing the Ukrainian parliament today. I have never seen this many standing ovations for a single speech. I bet B Biden will be jealous because Biden is just giving them 33 billion and I bet he didn't get as many standing ovations as Boris did. Ukraine is certainly lucky to have a friend like UK. No, you're wrong. You're lucky to have a friend like Boris, not the rest of UK. Don't put the rest of UK in your ridiculous tweet. And I want to show you this um, as well. So this is something that uh, was promised to the rest of UK before Brexit. And I just want to show you this. Ridiculous report uh, from some lobby group yesterday saying price of food will go up. It'll go down. Our food bills will be lower. Our energy costs would be lower. Our tax bills would be lower. Outside the EU, our food bills will be lower. Our fuel bills will be cheaper. Our taxes will be lower. I think people will be better off in terms of their household budgets. So you can see basically how the UK has been lied to by Boris. Boris was one of the main instigators of Brexit. You know, him and his parliament were saying, oh, everything's going to be lower. Electricity costs are going to be lower. Gas prices are going to be lower. Food prices are going to be lower. Taxes are going to be lower. You know, if we do Brexit. And guess what? Guess what? Everything's gone higher. Everything. All of their promises have been absolutely fake. And not only that, even though gas prices are ridiculous and the rest of the UK is literally struggling to make ends meet you got companies like bp who are still making billions of profit through these high gas, high gas prices and these you know companies are not being uh they don't take the profit from these companies why not why not take these profit from these companies and let the rest of uk pay less um gas prices it, it's beyond me absolutely beyond me guys i just don't get it you know, these companies are still making billions, these gas companies, while the rest of UK are struggling. You know, that just goes to show how badly managed um, UK is. Not only that, you've got, um, <clears throat> you got Rishi Sunak's wife, who obviously um, has shares in Infosys. And even though that she promised that Infosys is going to get out of Russia, um, her firm is still in, in Russia making money. And you can see firm linked to Rishi Sunak's wife still operating Russia weeks after vowing to leave. So that company is still in Russia making money while other UK based companies are forced to leave while his wife is basically there making, still making riches. It's just not fair guys, absolutely not fair. So finally I want to come to this story how Israel wants an apology from Lavrov saying that Hitler might have had Jewish blood. So, my opinion for this is, Israel's support of Ukrainians' alliance is risky but unavoidable, it says here. But Russia has claimed back, saying Russia says Israel supports neo-Nazis over row over Ukraine. And this is 100% correct. And you see a lot of Israelis, you know, basically, I just see it as double standards and hypocrisy. You see so many Israelis out there basically saying, we are pro-Ukraine, uh, we are completely against Russian occupation of Ukraine. Have you seen what Israel is doing to Palestine? It is complete double standards, absolutely double standards. They have completely occupied Palestine and these people don't have a life uh, at the moment. You know, Israel controls what goes in, what goes out. They just don't have a life. They don't. There's no freedom there. And they can talk about Ukraine, uh, you know, they need to be free and democracy and, and all of these Israel lobbyists are, are being pro-Ukraine. But do they actually know what's happening in Palestine? Can you, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And what's worse, these, you know, Israelis are basically supporting these fascists and neo-Nazis. I mean, look at this picture. You got a picture of Azov militants, and you know they're from Ukraine. I mean, look at his T-shirt. He's got the Ukrainian flag and the Ukrainian symbol for Azov militants, and he's got a picture of Adolf Hitler in there. And then you got, you know, this article here: BBC interviews Ukrainian soldier with Nazi symbol on his uniform, and you can, 
and you can see here, I want to show you this. I want to show you this. From Western Weaponry, have got them this far. Mark tells us we have to move. Well, that patch on the soldier's arm is the symbol of Nazi Germany's SS division known as Death's Head. The division was formed of concentration camp guards at the start of the Second World War, and it was known for the mass murder of war prisoners, including 97 British soldiers captured, captured in France in 1940. So you can see, you know, this is the Nazi symbol where probably hundreds and thousands of Jews were killed in concentration camps. And this is what the Jews and the Israelis are supporting over Russia. I just don't get it. Have the Jews forgotten what's happened in the Second World War? Have the Jews forgotten what the Nazis did to them? This is beyond words. This is beyond words. I just don't understand the Israel's positions on this. They should be supporting Russia in denazification. I think the Israeli people need to take a really long, hard look at themselves, a really long, hard look at themselves before they start supporting Ukraine. Anyway, that's all I have time for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think and I'll see you in the next video.